Hello, me again with another DIY tutorial uh, on some beetle weight stuff for a change. Yes, we run beetle weights as well as the featherweights. Uh, there are a fair few beetle beetles, but today what I've got are Bane Box wheels. These are really good for off the shelf wheels. I think they are possibly the, one of the better off the shelf, if a little bit on the pricier side, but they are worth it. The wheels themselves are spot on. We use them on Clause 2 and especially in Series 1, we're not going to mention Series 2. Uh, series 1, they worked really well. Uh, a bit tricky changing them because they have these stupid C clips, but use the right tools they are they are good however the first event we went to with clause two this is pre bugger bots after the first fight one of the wheels wasn't working so the motor was spinning but it wasn't turning the wheel and when you order these you have to order separately wheel hubs so these fit on your motor uh, you tighten the grub screw over the flat spot, the wheel fits on the hexagon like that, and then you clip, holds it all in place. The clip's fine, the wheel's fine, it's that grub screw. They are potentially too small and the friction between holds and it in place just isn't there. So after the first few fights with Clause 2 at the first event we ran it, we were just, the grub screw was working its way loose and the wheels were, the motor was just spinning, not moving the wheel. And they told us about this little, I don't really call it a hack, but improvement. So I'm going to go over that with, that with you today and some other little things that uh, you can do to help with these weaker weights and wheels falling off. Uh, so they're pretty, really easy, easy to do. Uh, you're gonna need a drill. Um, you don't need a pedal drill or anything fancy. Just a four mil drill or four millimeter drill bit and a drill to drill a hole and a tap. Uh, so what you're effectively doing is removing the grub screw, drilling out the hole, and re-tapping it with a much wider thread and replacing that with a much better grub screw. So, really easy to do, and I'll um, go and get the stuff. Okay, right. Although I am using a pillar drill, it is not 100% necessary. If you want to use a, a cordless or you know, any drill you want, this you're not drilling and tapping that far, so the fact of not being 100% straight isn't really an issue, it's just... I have a pillar drill so I'm using it. So, right. First of all, remove the grub screw. If it's already in. Um, and that's now, <laughs> that's now lost. I don't, I don't need it again. And place that in there. Turn that track in. So that is a four millimeter metal drill bit. If you want to use masonry, feel free, but you might not get very far. I'm just gonna drill out the hole and take away the existing thread. Now then, you need an M5 tap. Uh, those of you who don't know what taps are, they basically cut the, your own thread inside bits of metal. And it comes with the holder thing, which 
very, very handy bits of kit. So, again, if you don't have a pillar drill, you would just simply uh, screw that into there, and eventually you'd get a hole. However, a trick I have learnt is if you do have a pillar drill, and you're not very good at getting things very straight, is you can use this. So put your tap in the chuck, tighten it up, and basically you're using the pillar drill to keep it all straight and level and at right angles. Now, do not do this with the power on, you know, don't switch on, so I'm just gonna unplug it. So what you're doing is you're getting it started. So, a bit of pressure and you're manually turning the chuck to get the thread started. Because first time I did this, I had no pillar drill, and none of them were straight in the slightest. I mean, to be fair, I'm using, I use this method and they're still not straight, but at least I've got a better chance of them being straight. No. So, it's in a little bit now. Take it out of there. Carry on with the tool thing, and general rule with these was was it half a turn and one back, or no, half a turn and a quarter back, because as it's screwing into the metal and making your thread, it's accumulating of waste and things so by doing the turn back you're breaking that sort of string of metal it's all just little things I've picked up from other people Far enough as I can go in because it's hitting the inside now. So, should be enough. Then we have a very nice threaded hole or a M5 grub screw. Um, you don't want me to measure that now, aren't you? If I had a working capillary thing, that's that. It's about four millimeters depth wise. Or maybe five, hang on. It might be five, we'll, we'll go with five. I apologise if it's wrong, it'll be four. <laughs> so, that should now happily. It's right there. And then when you do it for the final time and you're getting ready for your combat events, uh, use Loctite 
Uh, Loctite needs about a day to, to set fully. So grab your emulator, Loctite around the, you know, Loctite. It's just a bit of goo. Um, and that will greatly improve the grip of that grow screw and drastically reduce it falling off. Another hint that has most of the way around is filing down a bit on the shaft. So as you can see there, that would normally be flat all the way. And all I've done, grab the file, file it down, and basically you want to file it where that grub screw would hit. So the grub screw would sit inside the filed bit. So even if it does work its way loose a little bit, it's still going to be grabbing onto the undented bit of the shaft. So it's another way of just making sure everything doesn't fall off mid-combat. So, uh, so that's that. Uh, yeah, nice little hint, hint and tip for bit of weights. Stop your wheels falling off. Nothing worse.